Welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight we're going to explore the Veil Nebula. But before we get started, I just want to give a big thanks to my viewers and subscribers. I am truly thankful for the support and I enjoy our interactions in the comments section. This is an amazing hobby and it's a pleasure to discuss all things astrophotography with my fellow and prospective imagers. Thank you to all that have subscribed. If you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Likes, dislikes, and comments are all welcomed. All right, let's get started. So the Veil Nebula is a really cool target. It's one of those targets I find myself drawn to year after year. Now last year, I did a wide field shot uh, of the Veil. Uh, this year, I want to swing my uh, eight inch Celestron edge and take a close look at uh, just a piece of it. And so uh, I've always been drawn to the uh, to the Western Veil Nebula. I think what's it called the Witch's Broomstick. It's just a really cool part of it, and it's I think it's also one of the brighter parts. So let's get my sensor on there. So ASI 294 and the edge with the 0.7 reducer. And I figure I'll put the center right on that bright star there. And that gets me the, the bulk of the uh, veil. So um, I did try some test shots of this just to see how things would frame up. Uh, let's take a look at how that came out. So I took about 20 to 30 minutes of each filter, uh, HA, O3, and S2. I planned to go just HOO, uh, but I was curious to see what the S2 was like, and I ran into a problem. So let's take a look at my HA. And so it looks pretty good, except I've got this ugly halo here. And this halo, this is actually not so much the star itself, this is the central obstruction of my scope. There's a, a calculation, or I should say a formula, available. I don't have it handy, but you can use it to uh, measure the size of the halo and figure out how far away this halo is from the uh, sensor. And when I ran, ran those numbers, it, uh, the result I got was that this is coming from the uh, reducer. So I don't know if this is a problem with the reducer itself or if there's a reflection that's bouncing off of the reducer. And I'm not entirely sure if it's my filter. These are all astronomic 6 nanometer filters. Is it the reducer? Is it, is it the sensor itself? I know that the 294, uh, both the color version and the mono version, despite technically being different sensors, uh, there's some issues with um, with red light, like I can see it in the flats on my HA, it, it doesn't cause a problem on the on the calibrated images, but I don't know. So I'm not entirely sure where this is coming from. If we take a look at the O3, well, the O3 looks good. They're not having the same issue. Uh, but if we look at S2, it's even more pronounced. So the f further red I'm getting, the worse this is this is coming out to be. And I did stack these just because I cu was curious. I mean, there's the HOO. I mean, I can probably process this out, probably remove it from the HA channel before doing the combination. But I didn't want to take a chance that uh, the results would, would, be, would be good enough for me. And I didn't want to waste any more time on this. Um, if you're curious, here's what the uh, SHO version. You don't see the veil in SHO very often. Uh, the colors are a little odd, but I mean, you can do something with it. I played around a little bit with it, just ignoring the halo. But anyway, it was disappointing to run into this. Uh, so I decided I needed to um, point the scope elsewhere in the veil, and I'll worry about troubleshooting this issue later. I didn't want to waste uh, clear moonless nights uh, troubleshooting this issue. All right, so back into Stellarium we go, and let's figure out our framing again. 
Now, I already have the sensor angle set to match how my uh, camera is currently set up. So, the, uh, the uh, eastern veil, or the bat, uh, is a possibility. But, I mean, so I can get the main part here. But I would hate to leave this out. And really the angle is not quite right either. I think maybe the best way to tackle this would be to rotate the camera and do a two panel mosaic. But uh, the weather has been really bad lately. Very sketchy. And I've only had small windows over the past few nights. And, and going forward it didn't, didn't look too promising. So I didn't want to take a chance and have to commit to getting enough data to cover a two panel mosaic. So really there's only one other choice left and that would be Pickering's Triangle. And that's about the framing that I decided to go for. Alright so here we are. What I ended up getting was uh, uh, I shot 10 minute subs and I went 66 HA and 68 uh, 03. And uh, this was with the 294 mono, gained 120. And uh, the offset is whatever the default offset setting is for uh, Unity Gain. Alright, so here's our HA. size that window to match and there's our O3 so man these came out pretty good I think overall pretty clean lots of nice detail in there all these these ripples this is what everyone likes with this it's such a cool looking nebula so let's run through the uh, workflow on this image I did this a little differently than I typically do for my narrowband mono images and I kind of ran it like uh, like you would do with one shot color camera so What I did is I actually did the channel combination very early on. And I, it was just simply um, HA to the red and O3 to the blue and green using the LRGB combination tool. And this is a result. This just just hitting those in and uh, hitting auto stretch, unlocked auto stretch, and I mean that that gave me the color palette that I want to see right off the bat and I ran dynamic background extraction against that and I ran dynamic background extraction twice first time uh, with division and the second time with subtraction so that got me here after that I wanted to go ahead and run deconvolution and so I pull the uh, luminance just just by hitting this uh, this button right here, and then I got the support files needed for deconvolution against this. So I got my PSF, that's my uh, point point spread function there, and I made a star mask and the range mask. So only these darker areas, I invert the mask when I, when I attach it to the image, uh, but these darker areas are the spots that are going to be affected by deconvolution. And so this was a result of that. So this is that luminance channel with deconvolution against it. Now we can actually look at the preview here. 
and see the effects. So there, without and with. It's very subtle. The main thing that you'll notice is the stars. It sharpens the stars up, but we also get an improvement in the details. So the effect is that you you kind of get back some of the detail that you lose from the atmospheric distortion by doing this. Now deconvolution is uh, easy to overdo it. And I've been thinking about maybe putting out a video that focuses just on deconvolution. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys would like to see. All right, so anyway, once deconvolution was finished, I went ahead and combined them. Now, the way you combine them is you stretch them first separately. So I stretch the I stretch the luminance channel with the deconvolution attached to it. And I stretched it just using the easy CD, I mean, excuse me, easy processing suite and uh, the soft stretch. And then I applied the soft stretch to the color image. And then I soften the, the color image or blur it out. Uh, doing this really helps eliminate all the noise, uh, the color noise. And then with it blurred out like this, you go back to your LRGB tool and you just drop your your luminance channel right here and just drop it on top. So now we have a stretched colored image and uh, we can uh, proceed with uh, the rest of the tweaks with curves and, and such. So what I usually do next is I run StarNet to remove the stars. And uh, that's what I end up with. So we got our starless image here. And there's our stars. Actually, these stars are already processed. So I'm stepping back so you can see what they look like when I started with. And so I'll process the image and the star separately and we might as well just step through the uh, star processing. So first thing I do is get rid of this green, this, this overly strong O3 signal. And so that I hit it with the SCNR tool there. Then I invert the image and I hit it with the SCNR tool again to eliminate any magenta that may have been left behind which is pretty typical. So, I mean, this looks pretty good already. And at this point, I just tweak it with uh, curves. I pull back uh, on curves just a little bit, just to, to uh, uh, darken the stars just a little bit. It lets, it lets their own color come through. And then I start the boost saturation and I adjust the green and red curves until I end up with this. And my goal is to basically have a nice distribution of blue and orange stars. If you're not careful, all the stars are the same color. You either end up with like all white stars, which is okay, but it's, it's just, you know, I really like all the colors. And so it's kind of boring. Uh, or you end up with all blue stars or you end up with all orange stars. And if all the stars are the same color, uh, it, it kind of overpowers the rest of the image. All right, so that's our stars. Now, I use a lot of uh, range, range masks is what I tend to use a lot of, and I'll just show you some of them here. And these are just different masks used to do different tweaks to uh, the color saturation and uh, how much green I'm gonna leave behind. If, if you've been following my work, you know that I like to leave some green behind and so anyway, after playing around with that, I should leave this up, uh, this is what I ended up with. So you can see a slight, I mean, notice a slight, ever so slight change in, in color. I tried to leave a little bit more green in the brighter areas and take a little bit out. And 
And uh, this preview box here, what I did, and I think it was probably this mask here, is that I use this mask just to apply an unsharp mask to the very brightest bits. So now, so now after I'm finished with all the work, it's time to get the uh, stars back in there. And that's really pretty simple. That's just running pixel math. And uh, I renamed the uh, starless image starless just so it's easy to find in my list of uh, files. And I have stars. And I just add them together. So here's our starless. And this is with the stars added. I mean, that looks like it's uh, finished, and I was pretty happy with the way this came out. But now one word of advice that I would give to anyone, and I have to give it to myself because I'm sometimes the worst at doing this, is that before you, uh, when you finish an image, before you release it, before you go out and share it with everyone, except for maybe if you're in a small group of fellow astrophotographers and you want some feedback before you release it, uh, it's actually best to sleep on your image for a day because you start to think about how you might have been able to do things differently or maybe you're not too crazy. In this one, it, I, I kind of was hoping for a little bit more color out of this. So I, I took a pause and I came back the following day and I tweaked it some more. And so there's my color uh, starless version again. And actually, let's let's do a comparison. So we'll slide this over to that workspace. All right. So do you, do you see any differences? I mean, it's subtle. There's not a whole lot, but you can see. There's a little bit more color in this area. I took away a little bit more green and I kind of varied how much green was left and I made it more blue in the darker area to kind of give it more of a shadow effect, I guess. I don't know. I, I think this one's better. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think uh, between these two. Do you like uh, this one or version one or version two? So anyway, the final image with the stars is this. This is what I came up with. So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Um, and if anyone has any suggestions or questions or comments, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Other than that, I've got nothing left for today. So clear skies and um, have a good one.